Deep in the Hundred Acre Woods, a young boy named Christopher Robin came across some most unusual adolescent creatures, crossbreeds, who some would describe as abominations. The creatures introduced themselves as owl, rabbit, eeyore, piglet, and most importantly, Winnie the Pooh. It's not very often that I go to the theater, basically only when invited, but recently I took my wife to the theater to see a horror movie because I love her so much and she's so great and I love her and she's cute. But since you saw the title of this video, you're already aware that the movie was Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. The theater was empty and we laughed the whole time. I had a terrible experience, but I definitely enjoyed Blood and Honey from a so bad it's good position. Blood and Honey is a slasher movie made on a shoestring budget of under $100,000. It looks cheap, the actors are terrible, the idea itself is just creatively bankrupt, and it's exactly the kind of schlock that I love to hate. It was a box office success, which fascinates me, and it's even been greenlit for a sequel. The story of Blood and Honey is that Christopher Robin left the 100 Acre Woods, cutting off the food supply to the local animals that you know and love. They go feral before he returns, kill and eat Eeyore, and anyone else who comes into the woods. Years later, Christopher returns with his wife, and Pooh and Piglet kill her before stringing Christopher Robin up like a salted ham. Weeks later, a new character goes on vacation with a group of female friends into the 100 Acre Woods to an Airbnb. I'm sure you can pretty much guess the rest of the film. I've never seen a movie that cared so little for doing something original. Outside of the cool idea to give Pooh killer bees that he can telepathically control, this has to be one of the least imaginative movies ever. The costumes and visuals look absolutely atrocious. You can really tell they only had a handful of sets to film on. They keep going back to the old sets over and over again, which I found very distracting. At least most of the sets looked nice, but I swear some of these scenes were just filmed in someone's house or in their backyard. The plastic masks that Pooh and Piglet wear look cheap, and they're made from a hard plastic that barely articulates in any way. There's a scene where they have Pooh eat some honey, and he just kind of rubs it on his face where his mouth would be. It's really embarrassing. The blood effects are all terribly rendered CG that completely lack proper lighting, and most of what could be called cinematography is just drone shots or camera pans with a dolly. I mean, it's just awful filmmaking all around, really. Not to mention, these have to be some of the worst actors that they could have snatched up. I'm certain that at some point, definitely, I've seen some better acting in a porn. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Our daddy taught us not to be ashamed of our dicks, especially since they're such good size and all. The actors portraying Pooh and Piglet are just large men in masks, so there's nothing to cover there. Uh, they have no character and just basically act like Slender Man. The victims are all brain dead and have the self-preservation instinct of rodents. It's got a generic team of girls that you know and love. You've got the social media obsessed girl, the nerdy girl, the mentally ill girl, and the lesbian girls. They're basically all cardboard cutouts. But at least I can confidently say that the acting is better than the music. I want you to try to imagine what stock horror movie music sounds like. That's what the sound design in this movie is. It's just someone playing a water phone and one light motif that they overuse. Every time the movie really wants to push a scary scene, they would play the same two bars of what I can only imagine would be called Who's Theme on the original Blood and Honey soundtrack out on iTunes March 16th. Go get your copy now, only $19.99. There was a single scene where the music swelled and they saved Christopher Robin, and it was actually just really out of place. The scene was horrific, but the heroic music against such a flatly shot scene made my wife and I bust a gut. By the end, the repetition was scarier than the murder. Speaking of which, there isn't a single scary thing in this whole movie. From a writing standpoint, this is some of the most incompetent writing I've ever seen. The writers will introduce full concepts, characters, and plot hooks, only for them to be used for nothing or completely drop them. When I left the theater, my wife kept bringing up scenes from the movie and then saying, what was that all about? And then all I could reply with was, I couldn't tell you. At one point, the lesbian lovers enter to their bedroom in the cabin and one of them has put flower petals all over the bed in the shape of a heart. 
but their partner gets upset and says it's too early and that they can't be doing this kind of thing so soon. But so soon after what? That's never explained. They just never say anything else and then they die a few scenes later. At one point, a woman just remembers that she has a gun upstairs in her drawer out of nowhere. I thought they rented this place. Did she bring a gun? It's a big gun to just carry with you. It's as big as her forearm, not very compact. They shoot the thing once for the girls to draw attention to themselves and then it's never used again, even in scenes where it would make sense. Let's just call it a day and say, don't go see Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, unless you want to laugh at it. Don't support lazy movies like this. With all the repeated use of lazily slapped together sets, terrible effects, and awful direction, just steer clear. I'm giving Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey a two out of 10, horrible. Right, now on to Cocaine Bear. To be honest, I'm really split. My knee-jerk reaction is to just say that this was probably an okay screenplay, but it was terribly executed. This feels like a movie that is completely comprised of producer influence and shots made to put in the trailer. When I went to see Cocaine Bear, it was with a group of about a half a dozen people, and the theater was packed, like a Marvel movie or something. I ended up having to sit by myself, and the rest of my friends decided to sit in the front row because they were the only seats available. God bless their souls. Visually, that must have been a headache, and visually, Cocaine Bear looks like garbage. If I had to describe the cinematography, I would say it was shot like American Pie or the Scary Movie series. Scenes are brightly lit, and everyone just looks too clean. This is pretty fitting since the movie's a comedy slasher film, though. The bear itself is terrible CGI that looks like it was from 10 years ago. For a movie with a budget of $30 million, it's just inexcusable. The story follows about half a dozen characters from different backgrounds in the way that films like Snatch or Rock and Roll would do. All of these characters' stories converge in a based-on-real-life scenario where a drug plane dropped 79 kilograms into the Tennessee mountains. That cocaine was then found by a black bear who had just gotten out of rehab. Some of the characters are criminals trying to get the cocaine back. Some of them are park rangers. One of them is searching for her missing child on the mountain. Some of them are investigating the criminals. It's all rather impressive from a writing standpoint for something like this, but that still didn't keep me from losing interest in the beginning. The opening of this movie spends too much time introducing different characters and feels like it's really just jumping from boring scene to boring scene with nothing happening except extremely terrible jokes. At about the 40 minute mark, I got up and left the theater. I smoked some Delta 8 THC and then re-entered to an entirely different movie. The criminals were having a standoff with the detective and the entire mood had shifted to a more classic Western style. Even the music was playing along. From that point onward, the movie started to become a parody of different tropes in cinema, and it was a lot more bearable for it. Get it? Because it's about a bear. It's a movie about a bear. It's bearable. Get it? I also have to give the movie credit for allowing drug use by minors on screen. This movie has a scene where small children, maybe 10 years old, eat cocaine. I feel like that was really hard to sell to the producers. The acting in the film was all over the place, to be perfectly honest with you. Some actors did rather well, and others just couldn't sell it at all. Margot Martindale plays a park ranger who's trying to sleep with her gay boss, and her entire performance is just ham and cheese. Carrie Russell plays a concerned mother, and Ray Liotta is here for some reason. Liotta's performance is solid, but there isn't much for him to do. His whole character is just there to intimidate the others with a gun, and then force them to search the forest for the cocaine. I don't remember a single thing about the music, except for that it was all licensed and gaudy. But that's something that this movie has in spades. It's gaudy. It felt cheap. It's the movie version of a fake gold necklace that you buy in the middle of a walkway at a mall. Like a discount version of Stranger Things, but this time it's about a bear and its crippling addiction that's tearing its family apart. Though there were some cool moments in the end, the film failed to win me over. Cocaine Bear always felt one step away from becoming a Tim and Eric sketch, and its inability to either take that step forward or to take one backwards kept me in hibernation the whole time. I give Cocaine Bear a 4 out of 10. Bad. Comment what you'd like to see me review next, subscribe, and like the video so that YouTube will recommend more of my videos to you. Special thanks to our producers on Patreon, Anthony Wombo, John Foreman, Zachary Corner, and Biffman. Sign up for yourself if you'd like to see your name at the end of these videos. Happy Employee Appreciation Day.